What's up guys, Admiral Styles here. Hope you guys are having a great day. For this video, I just wanted to do a size comparison between various Federation starships. Just to see their scale and I find this so interesting. So here we have an Akira class. And I don't know, it feels like way bigger than I thought it would be in the game. Like of course we know in, in the shows and in canon, these cruisers are easily more than 300 uh, meters in length, especially the Galaxy class, which we know is, uh, I believe, 600 meters in length, where the Sovereign is 700. Oh yeah, by the way, I turned off collisions just for the sake of this video. And I'm flying around in a Type 11 shuttlecraft, which I believe we saw on the Sovereign class. And here we have the uh, cockpit of the shuttle. Oh wow, that's so cool. Alright, so let's explore a little more on the Akira class. Let me go a little slow. Alright, let's move on to the Ambassador. So this one's a heavy cruiser from what they call the Lost Era of Star Trek. So it's after the Enterprise B and before the Enterprise D, obviously. And, uh, we never got to see it's never got to see the ship in its own series or other than that one I guess episode from the next generation. It was never featured in anything else. Although we did see the ambassador class in a couple of episodes of the next generation. Alright, let's move on to the Constitution class refit, the Enterprise A. So this is one of the most famous and iconic I still Federation ships in all of Star Trek. So this is the one that, because of this ship, I believe, the rest of Star Trek was possible. It made the movies popular, which brought, I believe, brand recognition to Star Trek. People started to see it as its own thing, more so than with the original series. And some people may not like that opinion, but... I feel like that's what it is. Without the motion picture era movies, there would be no The Next Generation, no Voyager, no Deep Space Nine. So yeah, there's always a special place for the motion picture era Constitution class in Star Trek history. It's a beautiful ship too. I like the way it looks. It's simple, but modern. It looks high tech too. Like sure, it's simple, but it looks good. Oh, that's cool how the torpedo glows kind of disappear a little bit. Let me zoom out a little bit. All right, let's move on to the Galaxy class. Now, this is a beast. This ship is considerably larger in terms of internal volume than a Sovereign class. Just look at that. Let me fly as close as possible. Let me turn off the camera tracking. Just look at that. <laughs> Huge. Let's see, where is the shuttle bay on the... Alright, let's see... How accurate is this shuttle model? Maybe a little bit closer... Alright, we just started to disappear. <laughs> But yeah, it's pretty accurate, pretty spot on, I guess, size-wise. Since uh, this particular shuttle is larger than the Type 6s that were on the Galaxy class. Alright, let's move on to the next vessel. Let me just turn around really quickly. There we go. The Enterprise, sorry, not the Enterprise. <laughs> the USS Adventure from Deep Space Nine. Alright, let's move on to the Enterprise G. So there's nothing canon about this ship, but it is an awesome model made by DJ Curtis, just like the Galaxy class we just saw. That person made a fantastic representation of what the Enterprise G could be. It's definitely a 
a beefy, tanky ship. It looks like it's, it could take numerous hits. It can definitely hang in a firefight longer than anything else, and of course, obviously, it's from the future compared to anything in the TNG DS9 era. Alright, let's move on to the Defiant class. Alright, speed up a little bit so we get there a little quicker. Uh, and there you can see our next target, the Excelsior class. Alright, so here we have a destroyer slash escort, although, although some people consider it a light cruiser, but because of its size, it's more of a, I guess, I mean physically Star Trek ships don't really make sense when you label them as cruisers, battleships, frigates. For example, a Saber class, it's supposed to be a frigate, but it's larger than a Defiant class. So, you know, you do it that way you will. But here we see that the flying class is tiny compared to this shuttle, which is somewhat to scale. I would say it's not too far off from scale, but anyway, it's... Yeah, we can just see how small the Defiant class is. So I'll take control of that Defiant in a moment when I compare it to the Sovereign class, which we saw in Star Trek First Contact side by side, and the Sovereign just dwarfed the Defiant class. Alright, let's move on to the Excelsior class. So here we have the USS Tecumseh from Star Trek Deep Space Nine. When I first saw the Excelsior class in, you know, Star Trek, I believe it was Star Trek 3, The Search for Spock, but definitely in Star Trek 6, The Undiscovered Country, I was just blown away by how beautiful the ship looks. It looks like, uh, I don't know, it's just so elegant to me. It looks pretty cool. It does not look like a warship or, you know, anything that's prepared for battle, but it just looks like a mighty vessel to me. It's like, uh, I don't know, it looks like home, as weird as that sounds. <laughs> More so than a Galaxy class, even though the Galaxy class is probably my favorite uh, ship class. But yeah, just look at the ship. It looks awesome. Simple, yet complicated. It's just a, such a nice looking ship for me. Alright, so let's get in a little closer for proper size comparison. So it's not as large as the Galaxy class, but as we can see here, she's pretty big as well. Alright, let's move on to the Intrepid class. This is another vessel made famous by a series. This is the Intrepid class, USS Voyager. This is another vessel that's a bit controversial in its classification. Some call it a science vessel, some say it's a light cruiser. Um, why, can it, why can't it be both? I mean, we see that the Galaxy class is also an exploration vessel, but with proper refits, it's also a warship, as we see in Deep Space Nine. So with this vessel, I don't know, to me it's just a jack of all trades. It can do exploration really well and it can do combat really well. Alright, let's get it a little closer under it. So the ship is not as big as an Excelsior or Galaxy class, but it's not a small ship either, although the internal volume is not as much as it might appear from the screen. Like if you look at some of the uh, shots in Voyager, it makes the ship look massive, but it's not. It's like 300 meters in length, I believe. If someone wants to throw the specifications in the comments section, please go ahead. Alright, so let's go to the aft section. I'm not sure who made this model, but it's also pretty well detailed. This is the one that comes with the Kopiyashi Maru uh, expansion pack. This is also a ship that I find beautiful, like the... The design is just so well done. I like how rounded the ship looks. I remember somebody comparing it to, I forgot what that series was called, but not Star Quest. I forgot what the series was called. 
but I believe that was like an underwater show. Maybe somebody knows what I'm talking about. They could drop that name in the comment section. But that was actually, uh, I wouldn't say it was close, but some people really compare this to that. To me, it just looks awesome. All right, let's move on to the Miranda class. So this is a ship made famous by a TMP era movie, The Wrath of Khan. So in Deep Space Nine, this is considered a frigate, but in the in Kirk's era, this was like a light cruiser slash heavy cruiser, as it was comparable in firepower to a Constitution class. Just pretty cool. I like the way the ship looks. It's like a compact Constitution, almost comparable to a Nebula and a Galaxy class. Let's see, how big are those shuttle bays? Yeah, they're definitely bigger than other shuttle bays. Let me see. Yeah, you might be able to fit a couple of these in there. Uh, I could probably fit one in there. I don't see why not. <laughs> One in each bay. Alright, let's move on to the Nebula class. This is also a design that I found pretty good looking. It's actually... I'm sure you can already see it. If you're not aware with the, with the ships in Star Trek, this is a Kebash of the Galaxy class. So they took the saucer from a galaxy class, then the cells, and the, I guess the pylons, which is this thing right here, from the galaxy class, and then flipped the star drive section, and just attached that to the bottom of the saucer section. Looks pretty cool. There are two models of the nebula class that were used in the show, with different layout for the, uh, where the deflector goes. But anyway, I find the ship from some angles to be really good looking. From others, it is hideous. <laughs> and the torpedo pod, uh, this thing up here. I don't know how to feel about it, but it does, from some angles, give the ship a distinct look that's not too bad. Hand, Captain. But yeah, the ship is also pretty large. It's not as big as uh, the Galaxy class, obviously, but it's pretty comparable in internal volume, except for the missing star drive section. Just look at this, look how massive the saucer is. Alright, let's move on to the Enterprise E, aka the Sovereign class. Why am I saying AK? This is the Sovereign class, and a famous one is the Enterprise E. And if you play a bridge commander, the USS Sovereign. So you can already tell from just the shuttle comparison, the ship is a lot smaller than the Galaxy class in terms of profile. And this is also one of my top ship designs. I love the way it looks. This, this bow or uh, star drive section reminds me a bit of I the Excelsior class success. in the curvature. We need a foothold here to claw our way back. Yeah, I just love this design. It looks really good. Alright, let's go to the shuttle bay to see if this can actually fit in the shuttle bay. And this one here at the bottom. Let me lower the engine speed so we don't accidentally go through the ship. Yeah, this definitely fits in there. You can probably fit a bunch of them depending how far down the shuttle bay goes. And I've heard in different, uh, from different sources that these ships used to have a fighter complement on board. We do see that in Star Trek Nemesis. I'm not sure if that was true of the First Contact Sovereign class.
But yeah, this ship is probably the longest one besides the Enterprise G here. It's longer than the Galaxy class, but left. not as wide. It's about maybe half as wide as the Galaxy class. I'll do a comparison in a moment. Alright, let's move on to the Steam Runner, and that's the last ship I'll have for this video. Let's get full engine power. Alright, so the Sovereign class. We do see a so Sovereign class. <laughs> Oh my god, I have no practice doing videos like these, so I may say nonsense here and there. <laughs> Alright, so this is the Steam Runner class. We see one of these in the Starship Picard trailer for Season 2. It alongside two Nova class starships were following Picard and his, uh, his crew of brigands. So this design, I don't have much to say about it. I neither love it nor hate it. I guess it's just something they had to uh, make for Star Trek First Contact. It looks interesting. It's like they were trying to do something with the nacelle similar to the Defiant class. Because it looks very similar, just that in the Defiant this would be up here and integrated. I'm honestly not sure what they were trying to do when they made this design. And where is the shuttle bay? I suppose in this model it's not done properly maybe, unless this is the shuttle bay, but why would they have that in the front of the ship? Alright, let me move back to the... Actually, I'll get on board the Sovereign class. I can do a size comparison between it and the Galaxy and it and the Defiant class. So let's transport aboard. Alright, let me zoom in quite a bit, as there will be lag from some of the higher quality models here. Alright, so there is the Galaxy class, let's move up there. Let's go a little faster. Alright, that should be good enough. Trouble follows Klingon, sir. We better watch our back. Alright, let's go in under. Alright, I'm gonna switch to cinematic mode. So that'll make this a little easier to compare. Alright, so as you can see lengthwise, the Sovereign is a little bigger. If you can look at the tip of the saucer section. Let's see, right there. That should be about perfect size maybe? Somewhat. Alright, so the movement is not so smooth as I wanted it to be for this uh, cinematic mode. But yeah, if we look at the front profile, the Galaxy looks way bigger than the Sovereign. Let's go to uh, Dorsal. The Galaxy pretty much hides the Sovereign class. And if we go to Ventral, you can just see the size difference. And yet the Sovereign class, out of the shipyard, freshly constructed, it's way more powerful than a Galaxy class of the comparable time period. So. The Sovereign launched, I believe, in 2370 or 2371. And at that time, it would have been hugely more powerful than a Galaxy class from the same year. But yeah, with some they refits, we saw in Deep Space Nine how powerful a Galaxy John class Michael. could be. So yeah, who knows what, what sort of epicness you can get from a Galaxy class if you fill up all that internal space with modifications for combat. All right, let's move on to the Defiant for our final comparison today. There will be a little bit of lag that'll clear up once we... There you go, it cleared up already. <laughs> All right, let me just get in a little slower.
nice and slow. Full stop. And I'll start turning here. All right, let me switch to cinematic mode. All right, so there you have it. The defined class above the sovereign class. <laughs> yeah, you can see just how small the defiant is. So considering how powerful the Defiant is for its size, it's actually pretty impressive. Oops. But alright guys, this is it for this video. Hope it wasn't too boring, hope I didn't have too many pauses between speaking. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'll try to get more practice in with doing videos where I'm talking like this, so that as time passes and more videos come out, I'll be much better at speaking. That's not something I usually do. I actually have a little bit of, uh, I would say shyness when it comes to public speaking. But, uh, oh yeah, sure, it's a video and I'm not in front of people, but it's still the same difference because I know people will watch this video and... Anyway, <laughs> enough awkwardness. All right, guys, that'll be it for this video. Thank you for watching. Hope it was interesting to you. Uh, please leave feedback in the comment section. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the next one. Admiral Styles out. Stop.